Today's readings are about time. In the Gospel, Jesus makes a resolute decision to go to Jerusalem because he knew that his time had come. In our first reading, we heard from the book of Ecclesiastes, one of the most famous passages in the Bible. It is also about time. It begins by saying, there is an appointed time for everything and a time for every affair under the heavens. I counted the number of times that it used the word time. You know, I was able to count 30, 30 in all, in just 11 verses. Allow me therefore this evening to share a reflection on the meaning of time. It happens to be one of the big challenges for modern people who lament about not having time for many things that they wish they could do. Sometimes, in order to excuse themselves, some people would say, I'll try my best, huh? if I find time for it. And yet, they know that time is not found, it is made. If you don't make time, it means you have chosen not to. Remember that line in the book, The Little Prince, where the fox consoles the little prince with a thought, it is only it is the time that you spent for your rose that made your rose important. In the Greek language, there are two different words for time. Kronos and Kairos. In English, both are translated as time. But they don't exactly mean the same thing. Chronos. That is where the, ter the term chronological comes from. It refers to time in terms of quantity, such as how much time do you have? Or what time are we going to start? On the other hand, there is kairos, and it means it refers more to time in the sense of timing. Like when we discern whether or not something is opportune. Sa Tagalog, ang tamang panahon o napapanahon. Kairos is not about the length of time. It's not the calculated time or the quantity but the quality, the quality that we give to the moments that we spend for each other. Like, we can spend many hours or even days and be wasting our time if we don't really give our hearts and souls to what we do. The passage that we heard today from Ecclesiastes ends with the following line, and I quote, He has made everything appropriate to its time and has put the timeless into their hearts. When we invest love, care, generosity, and thoughtfulness in what we do, it is then that we are able to put the timeless into our time, the memories that go with them become timeless. In my younger years, I remember a song by Jim Croce entitled, Time in a Bottle. And the song says, if I could save time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is to save every day till eternity passes away. 
just to spend them with you. If I could make days last forever, if words could make wishes come true, I would save every day like a treasure and then again I would spend them with you. It is a song that regrets not having spent more time for his beloved because he got busy, probably, with many other things and found it too late when he finally decided to make time. He realized that there was no way he could turn back the clock because, as they say, time flies very fast. You wake up and the moment is gone. In the same song of Jim Croce, the realization comes in at the refrain part where he says, but there never seems to be enough time to do the things you want to do once you find them. Sometimes, the very desire itself to do everything that we want makes us unable to do what we really need to be doing. How much time do we really have in this world? Yesterday, I called your attention to the ending of Psalm 90, which is a prayer. You can replace the word days there with time. And it still captures the same thought that Ecclesiastes is trying to impart to us. I would paraphrase it this way. Lord, teach us to use our time as we should so that we may gain wisdom of heart. It is not really the length of days or time or months or years, but the quality that we give to it that makes life worth living. Look at Jesus. He stayed with his disciples only for three years. Tatlong taon lang. He was crucified at the age of 33. But wow, what a profound impact those three years had, not just on his disciples, but now on the whole world. As we come to terms with our mortality, we get to realize the vanity of many of our human pursuits. We realize that life is a journey, and our destination is not here in this world that we are only passing through. I mentioned that also yesterday. We were created not just for this brief and fleeting moment of mortal life, but for eternity. And that is why we are in a constant search for meaning and purpose, for that which will truly last. And we discover that only one thing lasts. And St. Paul names it. Only love lasts forever. And only Jesus can teach us how to spend our time well. But first, we have to be like candles that do not mind burning out as long as we give light. We have to be like bread that do not mind being consumed as long as we are able to give nourishment. Like I said yesterday, death should make us appreciate life even more and teach us not to waste our time in this world. Life is grace and no one can ever claim any entitlement to it. And so, what matters most is to live it as grace, meaning in utmost generosity. 
St. Augustine was himself a young and restless soul who spent his time recklessly until he found God in his life. And it was then that his whole life's purpose changed. And he wrote this in his immortal book entitled, The Confessions. He said, You have made us for yourself, O God, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you.